Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Today we're going to flatten out this twisted frame for a Miller's Falls breast drill. It's been twisted to the point where it's got uh, about a 15 degree bend in the handle. What I'm going to use to flatten it out is this Harbor Freight 10 ton press. It's a C frame press, it's not an H frame. C-frame has one open side. It's built with a pretty heavy piece of steel. This is quarter inch two, four by six. Got a good piece, of, a couple of pieces of eight inch channel on the bottom. This 10 ton jack can actually bend and twist this frame. Harbor Freight builds inexpensive tools. They're designed for the hobby user. These aren't the same machines that you're gonna find at the factory where you can overload them 100% and they just kind of shrug it off and keep on going. I never overload this one. I recognize that it is a hobby device. It's meant to do uh, just exactly what it's said to do. And if I keep it about 50%, it's gonna last me a long time. Hydraulic units are a little more resilient, a little more tolerant. Uh, you can have a ram that's a little loose and the seals, which are cup seals, are going to just uh, flex and the more pressure you put on them, the tighter it's going to wrap around the shaft and, and keep it from leaking. This pump with an 18 inch long handle in it and my considerable mass on the end of the handle can generate 10,000 psi without thinking about it. 10,000 psi on an inch and a half cylinder bore, that's a lot of pressure. So use your tools like you want to keep them. Us hobby guys, we have a tendency to buy the smallest, least expensive device that we think we can make it do the work. And then we just crank the hell out of it trying to make it do what we want it to do. It's really the wrong way to go. When I buy equipment for the factories, I buy something that's underrated by at least 50%. In other words, if I buy a 2,000 ton press, the frame should be built to handle 3,000 tons because I expect it to last a long time. If you treat this press like I do the ones that I buy for factories, where I say we're going to spend a million, maybe even $10 million on a piece of equipment, I expect it to last a long time. You underrate it. You don't take it to full tonnage. If you do the same thing with this press, it'll last you a long time. The handle's bent in a curve like this, with a, bend, with a bend actually starting about here, and this whole thing is curved over. So I'm going to set this section right here on one of the railroad spikes, and this section on the other, because I think the bend is all concentrated in these two pieces right here, and I'm going to see if I can just push about here and push the bow out of it. This is a 10 ton arbor press. I'm hoping it's enough power to actually do the work. Okay, we made a pretty good bend there. I'm gonna loosen it up. Take a look at it. Oh, now I've got an S curve. I need to put the bend right in here. So I'm actually going to end up curving this thing the other direction.
Okay, this section right here now is flat. I'm gonna take it back the other way. I can't do this too much or I'll have a bend in the thing and it'll kink. I wanna put it right at the junction between those two brackets right there so that all the bending happens right in that short little spot. Getting there. Mosquitoes out here or something else. gaining on it. We've got just a little bit of a kink right there. This side is almost straight. It's not perfect, but it's close. I think that's about as good as I'm going to get it. Oh, that looks good. This lines up straight with a shaft. That lines up straight with a shaft. That looks good. This section lines up straight with this part. This section lines up straight with these. The center line of this gun runs right down the center line of those two holes. Near as I can eyeball it, it looks good to me. 
So that's where we're staying with it. It's a little tough to say you're exactly centered on everything because the parts of the drill itself are not exactly even. One side of the bow is a little bit longer than the other and the outside of the casting doesn't match the inside. This wall is a little thicker right here than it is right there. So there's some variation in it, but I think if you look at the center line of these holes, they're on line with the center line of that hole and they're on line with the center of the handle pin and they're on line with the center of this. Even though it's a casting and that means that these holes are not necessarily in the center of that boss, that doesn't really matter as long as the, the gears line up straight and everything drives straight. So we have the, the warped handle flattened out and I think we're good. Well, we've been successful. We got the Miller frame straightened out and now we're on to the next job. Thanks a lot for watching.